All right, this video is going to take a little tour of my lab, uh, mainly at the request of folks on my YouTube channel and of uh, uh, Chris Gamble and uh, Dave Jones from the, the Amp Hour podcast. So uh, if you don't listen to that podcast, you should. Uh, this, this shelf here is mainly chemical storage and a couple of other pieces of test equipment and things like that. Uh, grid dip meter I did a video on a few months ago. Little transistor checkers here and in the brown box over there. And uh, kind of parts storage and kind of a boneyard for bar bits and pieces and parts. And uh, all these little storage bins and things like that have all got uh, components and parts in them. Uh, kind of over here is the main bench. Um, Got a number of different uh, oscilloscopes and such. I like that here. Uh, this scope here is a, uh, a Tektronix uh, 485, 350 megahertz, uh, two-channel scope uh, from about the 1980 vintage, and uh, had the distinction of being, I think, the only portable 350 megahertz scope that would fit underneath an airline seat. So uh, uh, all solid state, uh, really nice scope, and has one of the sharpest uh, displays of any of the scopes that I own. Really great little unit came to me in disrepair and I had to fix it, And uh, but it, uh, really well worth the effort there. This is a, uh, a Tech uh, 1401A uh, Spectrum Analyzer module. Basically converts a, a, any scope that can do XY into a, a Spectrum Analyzer. Uh, not a bad little unit. And uh, I picked that up at a ham fest and had to repair that as well. Over here, this is a uh, Tektronix FCA 3003 frequency counter. Uh, We've got a pre-scaled input up to 3 gigahertz and then two inputs that'll go up to three, uh, 300 meg. Uh, this analyzer here is an Advantest uh, U3641 spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator up to 3 gigahertz. Uh, really handy for tuning filters and things like that. Uh, this scope here, one of the wor another workhorse in my lab. This is the Tektronix 465 ACT. And uh, actually on the scope is the uh, actual video of me doing this video. <laughs> using my little scope converter circuit. Uh, the 2465 came out in about 1985-86 or so. The A came out in 87 or 88. 350 megahertz, uh, uh, four channels. Uh, great little scope, dual time base, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, over here is uh, kind of the soldering equipment, uh, an old hexacon uh, soldering iron there, and a Metcal here with, uh, this is the uh, little surface mount tweezers, and then uh, the regular soldering iron here. Really love this because the short working distance makes it really easy to work on small parts and surface mount and such. Oh, solder, flux, uh, uh, isopropyl, etc. Uh, things like that. Power supplies here in the bench. Uh, this little B and K is a you know 15 to 20 volt, uh, close to you know 20, 25 amp uh, power supply. Uh, really good for anything that are you know, working on high power, but. Uh, the bulk of the time I use these little HPs. I love these little things. That's a 12 volt, uh, 1.2 amp, and then a couple of uh, 25, 30 volt, uh, 500 milliamp power supplies. Uh, I kind of prefer the analog metering on the on the supplies because I'm a firm believer if you want to set a power supply accurately, you're going to uh, uh, you know measure it with a DMM at your at your uh, your board. So uh, I just use the meters here to kind of set it manually. So I like these little power supplies. Uh, down here is uh, this is uh, the only Tektronix digital scope that I have here in the, in the lab. Uh, it's a, a reasonably older model, probably eight to ten years old now. Uh, Tektronix TDS 2014, 100 megahertz, uh, four channel. Uh, you know, not uh, you know, it's a nice little scope, but uh, you know it's again it's about ten year old technology compared to some of the new modern uh, digital scopes that are out there. This guy down here, great, great little signal generator, uh, AFG3252, two channels up to uh, 240 megahertz. Uh, can do uh, some arbitrary waveforms, can do sweeps and bursts and modulation and all that kind of stuff. Great little unit. Uh, actually, this, this is the little circuit that uh, is converting my video into the X and Y signals to look at on the scope over here so you can kind of see you know, that going on. Okay. Uh, let's see, just a bunch of other stuff here on the bench. Uh, this is a, a Fluke 79 uh, DMM. Use that one all, all the time. Uh, another Fluke, uh, excuse me, a Bird uh, RF power meter. Uh, doing all my RF work here. And a Simpson 260 uh, a VOM, kind of a staple in the industry for analog meters. I really like using the analog meters when adjusting circuits and things like that. Uh, let's see, uh, Fluke 87 is one of the original models. 
uh, still works great. I, I think I replaced the little zebra strip on the uh, LCD display, which is what typically goes bad with these older ones. You can get a little kit to re replace that zebra strip and it comes back uh, good as new. Well, let's see up here, this is a uh, LC meter, a really great little uh, resistance capacitance meter made by uh, almost all digital electronics. Uh, great little meter, highly recommended. And then there's a, uh, a resistance or resistor substitution box. Uh, this scope down here, the Tech uh, 465B, one of the most popular scopes that uh, Tech ever made, 100 megahertz dual channel from about the same vintage as that 485 uh, from. Uh, you know, very early 80s, you know, 1979, 80, 81, 82, that time frame. Great, great little scope. I've had this guy for about 25 years. Uh, this guy here is the exact model 566 uh, sweep and function generator. I featured this on a video a couple months ago. It did a little tear down. Great old school through hole single board, you know, type unit here. Uh, this is a leader, uh, LG 1311, a function generator. Uh, again, nice little box, all analog, uh, so if you just want something quick and easy, that works really, really well. Uh, this is a Heathkit uh, FM deviation meter, really good when I'm working on uh, small FM handheld transceivers and trying to adjust their deviation and such, and that's an adjustable RF step attenuator. Uh, There's a neat little uh, uh, camera caddy that I use uh, sometimes when I'm doing videos. Some people would say not often enough, it's like a kind of a shaky cam thing going on here. And that's a homebrew ESR meter for testing for uh, for bad caps. Uh, uh, made this thing and did a video on that about a year ago or so too. Well, let's see, this little chassis has got a little power supply, a frequency counter, and a little function generator built in. Uh, it doesn't get that used that much anymore in here, just like this uh, this old uh, pulse generator. And then down here, this is a an Agilent E4411B a spectrum analyzer. It goes to one and a half gigahertz. Uh, nice little analyzer, you know, kind of basic, kind of similar to the Avon test. This one does not have the tracking generator though, but it's also a little bit unusual. It's got the 75 ohm input option, and that's that's probably the reason I got it cheap, is because it's not. Uh, I would, would have rather to have the 50 ohm input, <coughs> but uh, so I just have a little, uh, a little, you know, 50 ohm to 75 ohm matching pad on it. It has a little bit of loss, but uh, but it still makes it very usable. Uh, down below that is a, a Roden Schwartz signal generator. Uh, this is the SML01, uh, covers up to about 1.1 gigahertz and uh, very handy for doing, again, some of the RF and high speed work that I get involved with. Okay, moving around, this is actually a function generator that I built probably 25 years ago. <laughs> and uh, it's just got the ranges here, the, the, the functions here, um, and then I this actually I think came as a little kit just with uh, kind of a basic function generator and then I designed my own uh, amplifier for the output where I could adjust it to be with a DC offset, adjust the gain so that's what the rest of these other controls are and I can invert the output so I've got the output in the sink here but I built that thing I could talk, probably more than 25 years ago before I uh, started collecting some of this other stuff. Uh, below that here this is a uh, another uh, uh, modulation meter similar to that Heath kit, but this one will do AM and FM, and it's, uh, it was commercially made by uh, Marconi. So, uh, but uh, a nice little instrument, and then a uh, fairly inexpensive RF signal generator here. Okay, you see these all the time on eBay and such like that. But a nice little uh, little signal generator. Uh, love my old uh, Nixie tube frequency counter. Uh, this is uh, made by Leader, and. Um, uh, so just a great little one, even though I've got this really nice uh, Tektronix one here, if I just want a quick and dirty measurement, I just like looking at the, uh, the, the uh, Nixie tube display. And then the kind of the main scope I use here on the bench is a Tech uh, 2467. Uh, it's also 350 megahertz, same vintage as that uh, 465A. And this display just shut down on me here, so we'll turn that back on. Okay. So uh, the, the one, it's, it's, it's also four channel, 350 megahertz, identical controls really to the 2465. The biggest difference is the CRT. This has got the micro channel plate CRT that does a very, very fast writing rate. It's got a little electron multiplier at the, at the front end of the screen that uh, makes it very easy to see single shot events running at very, very fast sweep speed. So great little scope and I uh, get use that all the time. So I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the tour of the bench here. This is kind of where I shoot all the videos. I thank you for watching, and uh, comments are uh, always welcome. And uh, again, 